everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to another sit down video and the sun is shining and it makes it really hard to film so <laughs> no I use a combination between um, natural daylight in the background and then I have lights around me in the foreground but when the light changes in the background whoo, it gets bright. I hope it's okay I'm feeling really motivated to film so I thought I'd sit down and film a couple of videos and this is one video that I really really wanted to make. I want to start off by saying first that this video is by no means shading anybody in the industry. These are my personal opinions and personal reasons as to why I don't buy things and my thoughts on things and that doesn't reflect on anyone else's feelings. I want to make that very 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 clear because sometimes I feel like the internet wants to make something out of nothing and so I want it to be clear from the outset that this is just how I feel about these and every individual is individual and has individual tastes and reasons for buying things and reasons for wanting things and also can I just say that everyone that I've seen style these items have styled them wonderfully. I however would look like crap in them so that is why um, I wanted to say that first and foremost because that is not what this is about. It's more for people that maybe have similar styles to me and shop in the same way that I do for you to kind of understand why I'm not buying these items. So without further ado I'm going to get into the video but before I do if you aren't subscribed to my channel please please do hit the subscribe button. Um, it is just the most wonderful thing to still be here like four years later and still have so many of you watching my videos and it is such a hard time to grow online that if you do hit the subscribe button it means everything and I, I hope that you you know that okay you know that because I'm doing this because I love the response that you guys give me and seeing you guys follow it's amazing so if you haven't please hit it <laughs> um, but other than that let's get into the video all about why I won't be purchasing these particular luxury handbags. That's not what I titled the video, that's the long-winded version. I've got five that I wanted to talk to you about today and I love all of these brands and I want to make that clear. Just because I love a brand, it doesn't mean that I mindlessly follow that brand and buy everything that they release and launch and I think that that's really important. On the whole, it's such an amazing acknowledgement if a high-end fashion brand or a high-end brand in general acknowledges you as an influencer. I think that from my personal experience, and I'm not the kind of influencer that works like being dressed all of the time and um, things like that, but I have been dressed in the past and I have been fortunate enough to be offered new releases from certain brands and to be able to wear them and borrow them and loan them and be dressed by them. I have had those opportunities. I don't get them all of the time, but I have had them. I think that it is so incredibly easy to get lost in the sheer amazingness of that and, and that acknowledgement that you just wear whatever the brands offer you and I think that I have done that and I think that I've come very close to getting lost in that and I can't speak for everyone and so much like when the Bottega bag launched and I saw everybody wearing that bag I was like oh my gosh I need it and I didn't actually stop and think how long that bag would last in my wardrobe as it is and now it's sat on a shelf literally there and I haven't worn it in in months. What I'm hoping to do with my channel, especially this year, obviously I'm speaking more about classic pieces, but also showing you the items that just because they're new, it doesn't necessarily mean that I want them. And hopefully that can kind of be a bit of a grounding um, thing for some of you guys that maybe feel the same way that I do when I see a new bag launch and I'm like, oh my God, I've got to have it and then actually sit back and think, does this really work in my wardrobe? Um, I know that I've made this um, intro really, really long, but I want you to know that this is a really considered video and it's not something that I'm just putting out into the internet to just shade people. I'm actually wanting to just provide, hopefully, a little bit of, how do you put this in? Like, it's a little bit of, whew, before we go buying things, because I wish that I had had 
a video to watch like this before I bought two of the Bottega bags. As much as I love Bottega, this is no shade to them. I feel like I have to keep saying that because in my last video, I was skeptical of Victoria Beckham skincare and that must mean that I hate Victoria Beckham and it, it absolutely doesn't. So um, I love Victoria Beckham, <laughs> who doesn't? I want to make that clear because I'm not someone that puts out negativity. I'm not someone that shades anyone and I'm not someone that feels the need to do that with my channel. But like I said, <laughs> this is the longest explanation ever. <laughs> like I said, I just want to provide a little bit of like clarity. So without further ado, bag number one is, da -da -da. okay, the Dior, which I love Dior by the way, I feel like I need to say this for all of them. It's the Dior Oblique Embroidered Mini Dior Book Tote. I have obviously purchased through my own money, I purchased the book tote myself. The reason why I purchased that bag was for traveling and for convenience, but also maintaining a bit of style with that. I'm someone that loves style, I'm someone that loves fashion, that extends to every element of my wardrobe, and I really wanted something that I could just bang all of my stuff in, like socks, and jumpers and toiletries and electronics and things like that into one big bag, stick it on top of my suitcase and travel. That was the appeal for that bag for me. The current new mini version for me just doesn't make sense as a bag. It's a very, very small version of the book tote. It's completely open, which means it's very, very easy for someone to put their hand inside if you're just carrying it. Um, it has no, from what I've seen, it has no kind of like security measures in terms of like closures. Um, and it just kind of defeats the object for me of what the book tote was supposed to be. So the moment that I saw it, I was like, that is so cute, so cute but so not the bag for me. It just, it, for me, it doesn't work as a bag, it doesn't work as a, a little mini bag, it defeats the object of that bag entirely for me. And so, for me, it was something that I was like, oh my God, I feel like I want it because I love Dior and I love my book tote, but in actual fact, it doesn't work for me and it doesn't provide me any kind of use or fill any gaps in my kind of handbag wardrobe, so that is, I think, I think I can say that there's no temptation there to buy that bag whatsoever. I could be wrong, and I want to preface this again by saying that perhaps they'll release a version that I'm like, oh, actually, I love that, or I see it styled in a way that I'm like, aha, that's how it works. But as it stands at this moment in time, the mini book tote is not on my wish list whatsoever. Next up, we have the Louis Vuitton Multi pochette. This bag I think is a potential, it could grow on me. They could do something that could make this bag appeal to me, but as it stands, it doesn't. First of all, I don't like the khaki strap. I don't wear a huge amount of khaki in my wardrobe. I don't like the pink strap because for me it was just a little bit too limiting in how it can be used in my wardrobe. And having had the pink pochette Matisse, I knew that I didn't need a pink bag like that or with that tone of pink in my um, wardrobe. I love the versatility of the bag, so being able to have it from a crossbody to kind of like a really vintage inspired little pochette that you, like from the 90s. So I love that about it, but I do find it a little bit faffy. I don't like the little coin purse on it, and I think I would never use it because I would first of all be worried that someone would just yank it off, I don't know, um, or I'd just forget that I put my money in there and just go into my normal handbag and be like, why am I checking like a Swiss army bag um, where everything has been put? And so as it stands, I think that it looks super cool on so many people and I've loved seeing how people style it. But for me, I think it lends itself too much to that military trend that we're seeing at the moment with all of the like um, Prada boots and those sort of chunkier feel, it lends itself a little bit too much to that trend, which for me, I don't necessarily think will be worn too much into the future. So I think that as it stands and as the bag stands in its current style with the current pink and green straps, it doesn't work for me. And um, I can't see it really filling a gap in my wardrobe because I think if I'm going for a crossbody Louis Vuitton, I prefer the Petite Mal, even though it's not as practical, I think as a design and a piece and a, and a kind of work of art and with such 
heritage to the design. It, it really does go back to the beginnings of Louis Vuitton and bring that trunk right to the modern day to a more wearable piece. That is something that I'm gonna go for because it's one of those bags that people take one look at and they're like, oh, Wow, so for me, that's the kind of bag that I tend to go for more. The Petite Mal, I'd say, is a lot more expensive than uh, the Multi Pochette, but as a piece, I get such a incredible response from other people when I wear that bag, and people are so intrigued by it that it's a real talking piece. Still, even though I bought mine secondhand, um, it's such a sort of a timeless piece in my handbag wardrobe and I would prefer that over the multi pochette. So that's my kind of reasoning behind that one. So as it stands, the multi pochette is not on my wish list, but I'm definitely not saying never with this one and it could potentially change. <sighs> Next up, <laughs> I feel like this was another one of those bags. I was like, I need to resist this. I need to resist this. It's the new Bottega The Pouch Bag, which is actually called the Chain Pouch. Um, and it's basically bridging the gap that was sort of there from the previous pouch bag, where it had no strap and you kind of had to just lug it under your arm like a baguette. It's giving it a much more wearable feature and that's great. It's making it a bit more practical because it's a bag that fits a lot of stuff. I haven't picked this bag up, but for me, I looked at my bag and I was like, I don't know how this will look being worn and will this just be a chain that kind of is almost like a piece of jewelry over the bag and just hangs. I haven't yet seen anyone with the strap over their shoulder. Correct me if I'm wrong. It looks like it's just a sort of design piece to make the bag look even more desirable and luxurious and it does. Believe me, it's gorgeous. And it's almost like one of those pieces that you want to put on a plinth in a perspex box and not touch. But for me, having had the, the pouch before, I don't think that it's a bag that is going to be worn and worn and worn. It's got a very trend vibe to it with that big chunky tray, big chunky chain. <laughs> That's such a hard thing to say. A big chunky chain on it and um, I don't necessarily think that that's a timeless chain and a timeless detail and I don't think the style of the bag is particularly timeless and it's not a bag that I'm really reaching for now. Maybe it will change, that's why I've not sold it yet um, but it's just, it's a bag that I'm resisting and I'm seeing lots of people online with it and I'm like, buy the bag Lydia, buy the bag. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not going to at this moment in time. Um, if I was going to start wearing that bag again, I would wear my pouch bag. I wouldn't purchase the chain uh, because I would want to get far more cost per wear out of my current uh, pouch bag. But as it stands, that is a personal um, a kind of regret and a learning curve. I feel like that bag really was the one that made me realize that I have to change my approach to these brands and not get caught up in that hysteria. So far I feel really good about it and I'm, I'm definitely looking at items like this particular bag with a different spin and I'm looking at things with a sort of clearer head and it's really helpful and this is not me making some big sort of like stand against these brands. It's just really to make me feel better about the purchases that I'm making. I'm not saying that I'm like never ever gonna buy a trend piece again and I hope I made that clear in the video when I spoke about it, but I am trying to do better with that and um, be more considered and so that is the kind of reasoning behind this particular bag as well. Next up, we have another from Dior, which I'm really sad to have two Dior bags in here because obviously I love Dior and this is not me talking badly about Dior and oh my God, I'm sweating. <laughs> But, yes, Lummy, <laughs> the next bag that I have seen lots and lots and lots that I've kind of had to resist is the Dior 30 Montagne bag. Montagne? Mont I can never say that word, first and foremost. I would hate to have to say that all the time because it's one of those words that when I go to like Avenue Montagne, I like hate saying it because I'm like, I'm not French enough for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bag that I've looked at multiple times in all of the different colorways and I think that on the whole I would definitely prefer the smaller version over the larger one. It's just a bit too, I don't know how to describe it, it reminds me of a little bit of an envelope, Maybe a bit of a school bag, I think I had like a Kangol school bag which had that kind of flap to it and it just doesn't have that, um, that real sort of timeless feel to it along with that desirability for me. 
Not to mention that it has only a crossbody strap, which especially for a bag like that, I would prefer to have the option. I think it would really do well to have a top handle because it is that more sort of satchel vibe. If you look at the uh, Pochette Matisse from Louis Vuitton, it's got that top handle, but it's also got the crossbody strap. And I think that that works really well for that style. The 30 Montan bag, <laughs> I feel like I'm not picking up the vibe of the bag really, really well. And um, it just, I don't know, it's, it, it just doesn't do it for me, but I do quite like the smaller version of it. But again, I'm not sure how much that holds. I need to probably go in and have a look at that one. But again, I'm not saying that this bag couldn't potentially change and my opinions change on it. Maybe they will add a top handle or maybe they'll add a design feature to it that later down the line I'll look at and I think that makes this a bag for me. I go to Dior for the Lady Dior. Like I would buy multiple Lady Dior bags because for me they are so timeless and they just never date that you can buy them in multiple colours, sort of brighter colours and you're always going to get the wear out of them. That's I think that's why I feel more comfortable buying those timeless bags in different colours because it's such a commitment to buy a coloured bag that you're not going to get that wear out of as much for me in my wardrobe that I need to know that three years from now I'm still going to be able to wear it and with my pink uh, Lady Dior bag, the little one, I still get so much wear out of that bag and even though it's a little bit, you know, it's seen a lot of love, it's still so wearable even though they've released so many other colourways and almost identical colourways, kind of like updates like rosy colours and more nude colours, I'm still totally happy with the Lady Dior that I have and that is what I feel is a really good purchase. I do think that Maria Grazia is doing the most when it comes to making her collections more wearable later down the line as well. I love that and I think that that's such an important thing. But again, it doesn't mean I'm gonna love everything that she does. You know, I don't go into Dior and buy everything. I buy the things that work in my style. For me, it's being able to look at the trends, look at what's happening and what's being released currently and being able to say, that's not for me this season but that doesn't mean that next season in a new style or a new pattern, that's not going to change. So yeah, that's that. <laughs> and finally, I could not do this video without having one bag from Chanel because I feel like that would be unfair. I knew exactly straight away which bag that was going to be and I'm gonna check the name of it. This is the Chanel 19 bag, that's it. Um, in all of the sizes and all of the colorways at present, this is not a bag for me. Having looked at it online and looked at it in store, it feels, for me, I think the, the overall aesthetic of it, it feels a bit cheap. And that's how I feel that it looks. Did anyone have one of those inflatable, like bubble bags growing up? I literally was desperate for one and my auntie actually bought me one. It was an infla inflatable backpack. That's what it kind of reminds me of, those plasticky leather bags that are inflatable and obviously this is just my own personal opinion and everyone that I've seen rocking it rocks it so well and it doesn't look cheap on them and they don't look cheap. I think for me I couldn't do that bag justice. I feel like it just maybe reminds me of something from my youth and that's why. I also don't like the metal tones that they've used for the handles. The very orangey tone to the gold and then the more gunmetal tone to the sort of silvery tone. They're both not really metals that I wear a huge amount. So even though having a, a dual tone metal to the bag makes it so much more versatile, I feel like the two metals that they've chosen aren't really ones that people really choose that often. It doesn't really make it any more wearable. It could potentially change and I'm definitely open to seeing more designs and seeing how it evolves as a bag but at present for me, it just isn't quite there yet. I haven't bought into any of the kind of maxi huge bags as yet. Potentially that's something that maybe could happen in the future. But as it stands, the Chanel 19 bag just isn't hitting the mark for me. And I, I just, I wanna see more from it before I make any decisions on how I'm gonna buy it. At the moment, that is definitely not on my wish list, but there is loads of other stuff from many of these brands that are on my wish list. So just to clarify that, that I am still obviously a huge fan of all of these brands. 
FYI. But other than that, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope that you've found it informative and hopefully it's given you a different spin to seeing these items styled up so perfectly by so many people. I hope that this is just a moment of clarity and a moment of consideration for these very, very expensive purchases that sometimes I know myself I've made in error. I hope that it helps. Let me know in the comments below and let me know if you would like more videos like this in the future. I think that it's not going to be one that I can do all the time because there's not quite so many handbags being launched, but um, and especially not ones that I like. This is like a long curation where I've been like, no, that bag isn't for me. So let me know if you would like more videos like this. And also let me know if there is a bag that you are currently looking at that you're like, that bag is just not for me, make sure you let me know in the comments because I would love, love, love to know that. I think that we're all so different and it would be good to know. Also, please be kind and don't, there's no need to sort of like reference anyone or who wears it. Just if it's your personal preference that you don't like that bag, keep it friendly, keep it kind and um, let me know in the comments. But other than that, I will hopefully see you in my next video and thank you so much for watching. Bye.